Years after a nuclear war, the few survivors try to get on with their lives. For 100 years, they have been at war with robots and the factories that make them, until they discover that they are robots themselves. A young woman is driving down the highway, listening to political news about world tensions and the impending use of warheads, when looking up, she suddenly sees a missile flying towards the city behind her. The girl stops, gets out of the car and sees the missile destroy the city. The blast wave reaches her and the girl wakes up. Emily's partner calls for her to get out and join them, because the time has come and the drone will be there soon. The girl hurries into the car, which rushes through the ruined city, remembering that everything was destroyed after the war, except for the large factories that continue to produce goods for the exhausted consumers. Tons of unclaimed goods are unloaded daily from the drones of the local artifact factory. Emily shoots at the drone but hits the goods. The drone begins to climb and if it succeeds it will soon crash, causing unnecessary questions from Autofac, who may send in killer robots. Emily shoots some more and this time the drone goes down. Emily instantly rushes to the fallen drone to get the control module. Emily gets to the right part and the men drive to their settlement, where the girl hacks the drone's defenses and connects to Autofac. She sees her partner's log and takes it away, as it belongs to her and no one has the right to touch it. Emily finds the magazine, which has an article about the woman who created the factory. After hiding the magazine, Emily hurries to the computer, which reports that it has contacted Autofac. We need to compose a request so that the customer service reps will contact the humans rather than send a replacement item. People come up with the most unusual reason, because otherwise Autofac might not pay attention to system failures and loss of the drone, and one of the helpers suggests writing that the product is pizzled. No one understands the point, but that's what they want. So Emily writes and gets a reply, in which they promise to send a support representative to the people within 24 hours. The next day the congregation gathers at the church. The people are terrified and demand that the stupid request be withdrawn immediately, because if the factory realizes that they made up this request, it might send killer drones that will just wipe them all out. Emily and her friends try to prove that the plant is reasonable and so realizing that it is not needed by humans, it self-liquidates. They can't wait any longer. The world outside the settlement is dying because of the factory that produces goods no one needs, and if people don't stop the factory, the last representatives of humanity will die out. After the meeting, Emily asks Coney to come up with a backup plan, because if her idea fails, they will have to do something else. At this point, Ali asks Emily to fix his water heater. The girl goes with the guy, and then it turns out that the device works fine. It's just that Ali wanted to see his girlfriend who hides their relationship from the community because she dated Coney in the past. Ali thinks it's wrong, but he loves the girl very much and can't argue with her decisions. At night they lie in bed, the guy suddenly confesses that he thinks he is worthless, because he is just a lame librarian. But Emily refutes these words, his books will be very necessary for the future humanity. At this moment a flying artifact machine lands outside the window. A representative of the factory comes out of the machine and it turns out to be a robot. Her name is Alice and she is ready to solve the problems that have arisen. Later she tells people that she is not human, but she can feel and understand, so she immediately realized that this request is just a way to summon the factory representative, so she needs to know what people really want. She is told that all of the plant's supplies are lying around unopened, simply because there aren't enough people to use them. If Autofac would stop dumping heavy metals and stop polluting the air, people could grow a lot more food. Alice argues that people need the plant, even though Conrad explicitly says that Autofac is harming humanity. Emily realizes that their plan has failed, and they won't be able to shut down the factory that way, and shuts down the robot. She taps into Alice's brain and is horrified, she didn't realize that a simple robot servant was so sophisticated. The people of the settlement are unhappy with this behavior and demand that the robot be released. But Conrad reminds them that they have already dissected Alice. Meanwhile, Emily realizes that in order to carry out reprogramming, she needs to completely open the brain of the artificial intelligence. At this time, Conrad informs that Autofac knows that the war is over and does not want to give up the power and if they want to survive, they will have to destroy the factory, and for this they have warheads, which they found recently in the ruins. Meanwhile, Emily remembers the rocket again and then sees herself cutting her forehead trying to pull out something under her skin. The girl wakes up, she fixed the robot but she can't reprogram her. The thing is, this artificial intelligence doesn't just mimic human movement, she thinks, and that's very hard to turn off. At this point, Alice comes to her senses, she realizes that Emily has gone into her programming interface and asks her not to do that, because she is just a servant and is ready and willing to do all her bidding. 
Emily asks the men to take a walk and speaks to Alice honestly, her code is too complex. And the plant's confidence that everything can be replaced is wrong. And then Emily informs them that she can't change her code, but she can destroy it and replace it with the brains of a downed drone, so she'll follow orders and take them to the factory. Alice asks her not to do that and promises to take them to Autofac, since they can't damage the factory, but they will definitely die. Emily comes out of the barn and tells her partners that Alice agrees to take them to the factory and will fulfill all their demands. As they pack up to leave, Allie asks Emily to stay, but she asks her to believe that she is the only one who can handle it. The helicopter flies to Autofact and Emily shows how the factory is set up and explains to everyone their task. The girl has made a device that can open all the doors they meet and gives it to the men. She also goes with Alice. Conrad tries to intimidate Alice, but the robot calmly replies. If she wanted to destroy them, they would have crashed into something by now. Ahead is an imposing factory building, from which thousands of delivery robots are flying away, and the pipes are spewing a huge amount of polluted air into the sky. A helicopter flies into the main entrance, and people see huge conveyors of various products. Jet is impressed, too much for their settlement. Emily hands out the fuses and asks them to leave as soon as they are set. The people go in different directions. Before saying goodbye, Conrad tries to give Emily a gun, but she shows a tire iron, she's prepared. At this time, Jet activates a device, the doors open and a robot appears and cuts off the man's head, and Emily goes to the bottom with Alice, and she wonders why the girl tricked her friends, because artificial intelligence can't be reprogrammed, and Emily says that she didn't want people to realize how similar they really are. Alice says that Autofact took her brain circuitry from the archives and modeled it after Alice Fry, a female employee of the factory. Alice says how she moves and thinks like her too, she's real. Meanwhile, Conrad arrives at the right place and sets up the warheads, but the next minute he hears some noises and snatches his gun. At this time, Emily and Alice arrive at the lower sections of the factory. But it's not a matrix at all, but a repository of some bodies in capsules. Emily tries to see the faces and stopping at one of them, breaks the camera, in front of her a copy of her. The girl is horrified. Autofac wants to replace the humans, but Alice says that Autofac has already replaced the humans and shows the shredded body of Conrad, who turns out to be a robot. The man's head asks Emily to run, but the artificial intelligence knocks the woman out with a stun gun. Emily regains consciousness on a table with wires and sensors. Alice downloads her archives to figure out what went wrong, since she's a pretty advanced model. A model assembled here, like everyone she knew. Humans died out after the war, and then Autofact created consumers and populated hundreds of their copies into multiple settlements. Everyone behaves as intended and consumes the factory's products, but they are out of control for some reason and Alice figures out what went wrong, but their settlement will be destroyed and repopulated with new specimens. Emily asks to recall the drones, but the artificial intelligence reminds her that it's not people who live there, but products that can be replaced. And then Alice finds an anomaly in Emily's program, which for some reason cannot be corrected, and realizes that it is not a system error, but a virus. And then Emily admits that she created the virus herself and put it in her archive. She didn't realize what it was either, until she cut open her skin and saw the robot parts underneath. That's when she hid the virus in her own program. She couldn't tell the humans weren't real, but then something interesting happened, the robots learned to love each other. Autofact put humanity into them, without wanting to. They're real, humanity's second chance. And she was modeled after someone very smart and with a strong imagination, and Alice admits that the original Emily created Autofact, but will now destroy him. After a while, Emily returns to the destroyed settlement where she is met by Ali. Quite an interesting episode revealing a possible scary future for humanity. Write in the comments what you think about it.